Oh, we, my group, um, on it, it Miles. Let's start with something. introductions yeah. first. How about that? Yeah. So I'm Miles Moranka. I'm Tim Cummings. I'm Meredith Miller. I'm Mara Kamasi. I'm the TV. And that's our group. Um, <laughs> so we were charged as we were introduced with putting a business inventory manual and template together for West Roxbury Main Streets District. Uh, now we did this in conjunction with the Department of Neighborhood Development and, uh, and West Roxbury Main Streets, uh, and the Main Streets District is a part of the Department of Neighborhood Development. Uh, so as you as you see from our from our slide up here, there are three steps that we went about this. Uh, first, we created a business inventory template and a manual. Uh, then we used West Roxbury as our pilot for this manual that we created. And then for our next steps, we did a business district analysis, which is an in-depth analysis of, of Main Streets on a, on a much broader scale. Rather, rather than focusing on West Roxbury, which is what we did, obviously, this was a more general report about Main Streets districts all across the country. Um, and really, the main point of that was to set up the, uh, the director of the Main Streets districts and the people at the Department of Neighborhood Development was sort of like a next step. Uh, we created this template and the manual. We went and we got the information on West Roxbury, but then we wanted them to have an idea of you know, what the next step is, what, what's further, uh, just beyond their strategy, which was to get this list uh, with contact information with, with basic business um, inventory data. So the functions of the database, this was as described by our client was to provide the Main Streets Director with an accurate overview of the business mix and up-to-date contact information, that was one. Uh, the next was to get the assessment of the perceived, bi perceived business needs as according to the owners and employees that we encountered when we went and actually did this. And then the last step was to create a spreadsheet out of all of this with the data that we collected. So there are actually two spreadsheets. I'd like to make this a little bit more clear. Uh, the first what is just a blank template that we created for them to use their 19 business uh, business districts throughout the city of Austin. We did one. So then we went and we populated it through West Roxbury. Uh, so here's our pilot. Uh, this is a little bit more about what, we, what it actually took for us to get uh, the information that we needed. So we were handed a incomplete business inventory. Uh, the categories weren't as fleshed out as we ended up making them, it was a little bit simpler. Um, through our experience both getting out and canvassing and talking to the director of West Roxbury Main Streets, uh, Kara O'Connor, and the director of the, uh, the Office of Business Development, Raphael Carbone, and the director of the Main Streets, of the Main Streets uh, Districts in general, Steve Gilman, uh, this was sort of what we determined. So it was a collaborative effort, them telling us what they wanted, and then us also going out and collecting more information and sort of tailoring it, um, the database to what we saw. Um, so we determined things like appropriate categories for it. Um, we're gonna flesh this out a little bit more later. And uh, so total time, it took us about 40 to 50 hours of actually hitting the streets. We went out and we walked around West Roxbury and we talked to people and we, you know, we interviewed them and we just sort of got a feel of what the business district was. Uh, so we used that. We, to uh, fill out our spreadsheets. And then uh, the last thing that we did was we determined the NAICS codes. Now NAICS stands for North American Industrial Classification System. This is something we added. Um, this is something that they had expressed. They expressed desire to know the business mix, uh, but they didn't have as a clear objective for what they wanted out of it. We used uh, this classification system that's used all across the country. Um, it's standard, it's really, it's really detailed. And that's what we went with. Um, and sort of the, the purpose of this was um, was that everyone's going to use this a little differently. The director of the Main Streets program, Steve Gilman, is is probably going to want something different than the director of an individual Main Streets district. Um, Raphael, <coughs> who is the, the, uh, the director of business development, might have some other use for it. So we wanted to make sure that it really covered uh, a lot of different uses. And that's what we tried to do. And uh, here's a little chart. This is just a quick breakdown of what we found. So in 2006, there were 214 total businesses that, um, that they had recorded. And in 2011, so five years later, we counted 193. And uh, we'll go into the individual breakdown 
a little bit more, but uh, as you can see all the way up at the top, the finance, insurance, and real estate and legal section dropped in the last couple of years, which certainly makes a certain amount of intuitive sense. Um, and we, uh, we were pretty pleased with it. Now, um, moving on, Dipti's gonna take it from here and explain the, uh, the manual. So, uh, we created a business inventory manual uh, to explain all the 19 districts on how to fill the inventory and uh, we explain each heading uh, I mean it's very evident that one knows what a business is or what a, what the first or last name is but um, it's just to regularize um, how people fill in the inventory because when five of us were working on filling the spreadsheet, all of us had different methods to um, fill them in, and when all the 19 districts fill the spreadsheet, it should be consistent, and when it goes to the high authority, like the Department of Neighborhood Development, they should be able to use the data um, efficiently. So um, how we did it was, the business, the first uh, column, the business column was locked so that when you scroll through the columns, <coughs> it, uh, you know which business you're lo looking at. And uh, let's go to the next slide. So we explain how to fill each column and placeholders like none or not applicable um, were supposed to be added where information was not available, uh, for example, um, say the rent, which was not disclosed by many of the business owners, but it's very understandable because it's a very sensitive issue. So if you and if you left it blank, it, there would be a misunderstanding whether the information is available or it's overlooked, and so that's why we wanted to add things like not available. And another uh, example would be the phone number. Um, um, it, it is formatted so that there is a <coughs> consistent style of having the parentheses and um, in the number. So the people just have to worry about entering the number and not formatting it the way it should be done. So, and now Tim will continue. So um, as Miles indicated earlier, we. Uh, took a methodology of going out and, and uh, meeting with the different um, business owners, property owners, managers to get a sense of the uh, mix of the district. And this graph up here uh, shows you um, essentially um, a comparison between data that was given to us in 2006 and the business data that we are able to collect in 2011. Um, as the graph indicates, um, business has gone down overall, as Miles pointed out, um, between 2006 and 2011, but an interesting uh, point that Miles mentioned was um, finance, insurance, real estate, and legal, the very first column on the left, dropped off dramatically, um, which, I, which is an interesting uh, data point to mention. Um, another, the next slide. Another interesting data point, actually, that we learned from this exercise is that 65% uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 65? Yes, 65. 65% um, don't have email access. 35% um, have email access, which um, just speaks to um, communication and whether technology, um, how people can really reach a business and whatnot, the different tech mediums to actually reach um, their clients or customers, or even how the district can try to communicate with with their businesses in their district. Um, another interesting data point that we learned while we were out meeting with uh, the different businesses is 156 respondents said that they didn't really know what their business needs are. Um, now that could have been very much because we didn't um, prep them beforehand and on the spot they couldn't think of anything. It's definitely a question that should be explored or whether there's actually um, uh, a, a stronger uh, point of evidence 
that maybe that uh, the business has some really uh, business owners don't really know what their needs are, and you should uh, and, and the district could look at exploring possibly helping with professional development of some sort. Uh, and then other issues that were of concern throughout the district that was uh, of note were pretty consistent um, things you you hear networking, um, marketing. Um, Restore, which is a, a program for helping signs and, and visibility and whatnot to help with business development. Um, but the second point to note is actually parking. Um, an overall theme that was expressed um, uh, in a certain manner, which I'll talk about in a few minutes later on, um, was the idea that par parking and is an issue within the district, within the West Roxbury. So, um, with that being said, we developed some recommendations um, with the analysis of the, of the business mix, um, parking. Um, we, we made a recommendation that something to explore is increasing the two hour enforcement within the district. Um, right now, the, business, uh, the businesses were complaining that the parking spots in front of the storefronts um, uh, were being used by vehicles and left for really long periods of time, four, six, eight hours, eating up that parking spot. Um, so uh, a need for enforcement would, um, would help alleviate that situation. That's a, a low cost remedy um, and it would uh, help nudge the behavior of, uh, of the business, of the clientele, of the residents and the businesses clientele within the district to conform to the way you'd want them to. So that's, uh, that was an interesting point. A long-term uh, parking solution that we would suggest would be doing a transportation and a pedestrian uh, feasibility study. Um, so that was, that was one of the recommendations. Uh, another recommendation was increased signage for parking that's actually available behind the storefronts, which a lot of people weren't even aware of, that there was some storefronts that had purchased parking behind their stores for their clients and customers. Um, but no one even knew that this that this parking was even available. So investing a little bit up front um, in signage um, would pay off dividends in the long run by helping uh, with the business development. Plus overall signage in general was also expressed as an issue and helping the businesses um, identify where they are within the district would help increase the businesses. Um, lastly is continued communication uh, between the district and uh, the businesses with uh, between the district director and the, and the business owners and uh, property owners within the district was also expressed. But as we cited earlier, um, lack of email access, um, and if that's your main way of trying to communicate, there would obviously be a disconnect. So um, that, that was no surprise to learn that. So with that, next steps. Um, this was the uh, this was the first step of what would hopefully be a um, you know a, a multi-step process. Um, you could do a further analysis to um, to compare the district with other communities that um, you're trying to endeavor to replicate, um, and you can use differing di um, indicators of demographics to uh, to uh, do some sort of market analysis. As the next slide will sh show. You can compare demographic square footage, um, different restaurant types, um, to enhance the uh, the business development of a community and within the corridor overall. So, with that being said, any questions? Yeah, let me let me ask the quick question here, and this is something that I want to reflect on for a minute. Um, when you began the project, what was the problem as the client defined it for you? What was the problem as you were presented with it originally? In terms, you want to know who's in our district and how to contact them. Okay, so this was a Main Street, you know, the Main Street Executive Director, that is the person in charge of this, kind of wanted to sort of have a sense of basically what, in this case, her clientele looked like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. she also stated that there were far too many of one type of business mm -hmm. and not enough parking for everybody. Those okay. were kind of the other main. So there was a sort of common <coughs> perceived wisdom about the nature of what she was facing. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, um, how did that sort of change? 
I mean, yeah, somebody made the point about parking, that she described there wasn't the parking problem. Um, yeah, what were the, the two biggest surprises you encountered, if I recall from the presentation? One was parking. The parking wasn't like a huge yeah. surprise. It's more of like people have this perception, but mm -hmm. it might not really not be true. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we weren't able to do like a transportation mm -hmm. study, so mm -hmm. we couldn't give them that accurate information. So that's why I suggested it. But I think like the lack of emails, or even the fact that a lot of them were saying they'd never met Kara or mm -hmm. talked to her or heard of Main Street instead. Mm -hmm. So although the Main Street coordinator, in this case Kara, was emailing to people with the information that wasn't getting out there to the businesses who may have had personal emails but didn't have any kind of work or business related email. And I think one of your suggestions to her from that was what? An idea that we had. It was, it was a great idea. Actually, Stephanie mm -hmm. uh, had, had a wonderful idea, which is to uh, provide email addresses for these businesses via the uh, website. Um, but West Rice by Main Streets. Mm -hmm. So to to do something like that, one, it would ensure that you would be able to to reach them, and two, then it, it, it cultivates them to be part of your organization. Mm -hmm. um, Takeaway lesson for the Main Street director and also for the Main Street people who were there on Friday um, about what it took to compile what on the surface seems a relatively simple inventory of businesses and yet what was your takeaway message to them? <laughs> well what I said last week was I, I went into the project with uh, with a preconceived notion that this would not be very time consuming and this wouldn't be a, a huge effort. Uh, however, I was completely wrong and my thought process changed 108%. Um, and an element to this project which we hadn't really touched upon yet was um, there was this idea that this this um, uh, template would be, or this 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 tool would be done within a certain time frame uh, by July by all the different districts. As we said, we populated West Roxbury, but the hope uh, by the uh, Court Street folks was that the other um, main streets would be able to do this as well. And we wanted to make sure that there was a proper uh, expectation on their end that we were a team of one, two, three, four, five people, and, and we worked on this consistently for three months, and with the West Rocks Ferry Main Streets, you're talking about one person um, with a couple volunteers. Um, I can only assume that other Main Streets are like that, so you wanted the expectations to be realistic. Um, but uh, as I also said, that this was a wonderful exercise and, and a great piece of information to have, and that it can be used in so many different ways. It's definitely something worthwhile to do. You just putting an unfair expectation on the district directors um, is something that I would caution. So that was an unexpected, perhaps, piece of information for the client about what it actually would take to do what on the surface would be a relatively simple project, and yet the amount of time it took. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people time. Questions from our audience? Yeah. Actually, were you able to identify the routes? the bus routes that service this area, and did you know if any of them were key bus routes by the MBTA standards? Because there's already studies being done. If they're key bus routes, there's already capital money out there to improve those corridors, and in and, and a lot of what you, you touched upon, um, improving bus stops, improving um, parking, and all those things. So I think it would be a great stepping point at, if one of these routes is a key bus route, you know, being able to have that email and that contact and getting the businesses involved, especially in the public meetings and the planning process. And that's all currently going on right now. So, you know, just the thought. Well, we need some transportation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could you guys, I know that you looked at numbers of businesses for the different NAICS codes that you broke down, but were, is there a way, or were you able to in any way look at the sales volume for the individual business locations because I would imagine that even though they're in fewer locations, if other if those same types of businesses had increased sales and it may offset some. So is that was that information available to you? Do you know if that if you would be able to get any of that information? It wasn't available, however part of the go back to slide. That's part of a retail analysis that we suggested in our report to them. Same thing with the restaurant, it, it goes into collecting information from the business owners about like their sales volume and their capital. And same thing with the customer origin, it's, it's doing having them collect zip codes of their customers to find out what their customer base is. And then they find out their trade area, people taking bonds.
sauce? Are they driving? Like, are they going and stopping and eating, or are they going and just stopping at one store and then leaving the district? All on that, we weren't able to get those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I was just curious how they got the um, 06 data. Did they walk around, but they didn't have a template, or? I don't know if we're 100% clear on how they had it. And that was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was, and that that was one of the reasons that we went to great lengths to really record how we did this. And even, I mean, you might have been you know, thinking while Dipti was explaining how we, I mean, we really explained that manual you know, to more of an extent than really any of us wanted to. But the reason we did it was because we did it so that when people would look at it, they would really know exactly what our thought process was and then how we went about doing it. So this will set a baseline that moving forward you can use consistent data mm -hmm. to try to do some sort of analysis moving forward. I mean, remember, the value to the client here is that it's a, it's a, a takeaway that allows the client to actually apply it elsewhere. I mean, it was the expectation of what we've done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Meta, um, Going back to Amanda's question, can you talk a little bit about your experience of the business owners in the survey? I mean, it sounded like you guys really couldn't get rent information, I'm wondering if you think that would really impact the recommendation to do this retail analysis and get more detail about their customer base or their how much money they're making. I think that most of the business owners are pretty happy to talk, but as we talked about last week, they, um, they're all really busy because they're all small businesses. So we'd come in and ask a question and they'd be doing three different things and, okay, hold well, on a second, and they didn't really totally know who we were because they don't the majority of them know the West Mercer Main Street. So if there was more familiarity with what the Main Street was doing and how they could be helping them, I think they'd be more interested in answering questions. Um, to a lot of them, the really more private questions, they weren't interested in answering because they didn't know why they would be sharing that information. So um, I think that there's a lot more work to be done in the district. And then that information, you're right, will be extremely helpful. They might have been more forthcoming if it was to actually be being there rather than us. Or they had ahead of the events notice as to what was yeah. going on, a little bit more upfront information, maybe they would be more willing to talk. So, good point. Did you develop the survey instrument that you used, or was that something given to you by the client? Survey? <laughs> it wasn't a formal survey. No. It wasn't a formal formal survey. Um, the the when the students went to the businesses, it was to populate the spreadsheet that was the business inventory, but it wasn't um, a formal survey instrument. It was just to collect information for the spreadsheet. So is that something that you recommended or developed? Because I think because the replication of it is definitely where it adds value beyond what you did here. And it's a wonderful tool with a spreadsheet, but I wonder if, um, given what you're saying about the difficulty of people answering and knowing what your key questions are and how to use time efficiently, and what you had on that last slide, you know, about the size of the business, number of employees, whatever the key things would be. Did you develop an instrument that you would recommend to them? No, you didn't. Just the spreadsheet. Yeah. You just but enhanced the spreadsheet. Was, you did find the, the uh, methodology from the University of Wisconsin? Uh, sort of. It was like they collaborated on that, but they didn't, there wasn't a survey in there about how oh, right. to conduct the survey. Like the question that you would ask the business owners while you're conducting the inventory. Um, yes, it would have been good, but we just we didn't yeah. focus on that. It's, it's something. It wasn't in your. Yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. in our spectrum yeah. of work. And and it wasn't what they wanted. Yeah, so they weren't really interested in it. So, um, but yeah, to have a standardization on how to fill out and conduct an interview would probably mm -hmm. be very helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I guess my last question would be, um, <coughs> what skill sets, in retrospect, did you wish that you had going into this project? I mean, given the degree of diverse array of people in the group, five, you know, but was there any skill set or knowledge area that you found yourself going, gee, I wish we had somebody who knew something in this area? Well, uh, initially, early on, we decided to um, use Excel mm -hmm. um, as a software program mm -hmm. because that's one what the client wanted but early on we had talked about maybe doing something a little bit more comprehensive with the database and uh, we looked around as a group and we said collectively that we would prefer someone to have mm -hmm. some sort of expertise like mm -hmm. that but it worked out in the long run that 
Excel was what they wanted, so that's what we went with. I mean, obviously, doing an access database would have been nice and one dimension. On the other hand, the maintenance and upkeep of that after you're gone is always an issue for these kind of projects. Mm -hmm. How, what is the robustness and sustainability of every week you're on? So, do you have questions? All right, good. Nice job. Oh, 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 good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Dan, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm Dan Spies, I'm a colleague of yeah. everyone there in the Crockett Center. Um, who, did, who did the 2006 survey? That was provided they did. By, by Main Street the, and, and the city of Boston. So, so Main Street had done a survey. Of no, the you're using the word survey. All I can tell you is they provide us a, provided us a table full of data. <laughs> of, of data about West Roxbury. Mm -hmm. okay. About well, the, um, we, uh, so the West Foxbury Business District had undergone um, a couple of uh, executive directors. They had, there had been um, a few replacements in a short period of time. And so I think a lot of their institutional memory left and also mm -hmm. there was no formal documentation. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't replicate um, and the, the current director couldn't provide to us the methodology that, that that was used in 2006 to classify the different businesses. Okay. So we did the comparison, but with kind of with these caveats. And, and so the inventory that um, the team completed this year, we we made comparisons, but there's a lot of caveats. So so there's a, so my question was, are you comparing apples to apples from 2006 to 2011, given yeah. that the categories may not be the same, especially since you brought up repeatedly. Um, that you were you were all quite interested in the fact that real estate, legal, and finance category went down, uh, but I also noticed that the health the healthcare went down by, I think by a bigger percentage, mm -hmm. um, which also kind of kind of stuck out in my head as well. It'd be interesting to see why that went down as well. And the types of the what they meant by healthcare also. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, so, so yeah. yeah. Could have been some doctor's offices who they acknowledge. Exactly. exactly. And, you, and you may not know that given yeah. that the fact that previous directors may have just taken information with them. So you're given what you're given, right? And and uh, I think that's that's interesting. I think with more, you said that initially there was a there was an interest in knowing the business mix, and was there an interest in knowing whether there was this if this was the right mix, mm -hmm. or did this fall out of the scope yeah. of the project? It was an interest in knowing if it was the right mix, but because we didn't really have the time or anything to compare it to, or really suggestions about how to do that. We gave them the analysis right. and then we gave them sort of something to look at next. Right. Right. So yeah, I think that they had these ideas of what the right mix should be and our kind of gentle showing them was that maybe they don't, they're wrong. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you guys, just, and there's so much to work with here, I'm sure you've got a million ideas. And just to kind of end, I think that data collection always seems kind of tedious and mundane, but it's essential. Mm -hmm. and, and it takes a lot of time, but it's also the basis of all your policy analysis and your recommendations and ultimately legislation. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's, it's critical. So, well done. Sorry about that. Just, just to follow up, I think that's what's going to be critical about having the NAICS codes moving yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be standardized. We did not have that up until us doing it. So. Yeah, thanks, right.